Welcome to the Oasis of Faith. Let's turn in our Bibles, if you would please, this morning to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1. 2 Peter, chapter 1. And as you're turning there, if you would please say this after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive, and I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, I want to deal with you with about a couple of things that the Lord gave to me yesterday as, as I, was, uh, I was all prepared to have my lesson all, all laid out, and the Lord changed it. But there's a couple of things that we need to understand about today, the fact that it is a day that we acknowledge the birth of Christ. And like I told you earlier, we really don't know when he was born the exact day, but we have an idea. But the first thing I want to deal with is the, is the, the, the word Christmas. Christmas. Because the word Christmas is actually a conjunction word. In other words, it's made up of two words. The two words are Christ and Mass. We know that the word Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And the word mass means celebration. So when you take the two words, Christ and mass, and you you join them together, you get the word Christ mass, or we call it Christmas. And really what it is, it means it's simply this, the anointed celebration or the celebration of, of the anointed one. That's what it is. Okay? And th- this is how language is, you know, the, the, the English language is, is probably one of the most mongrel languages of the world. And when I say mongrel, because it's made up of so many different other languages. We get a lot of our words from the Greek and Latin and, and, and different things. And all the words in our English language have just been put together. But we take words from other languages to make new words in our language. But I want us to look at the fact here in 2 Peter chapter 1, what Peter says. Now this verse, we never use at Christmas time. And I could tell you the story in Luke. You know, we could read it. It's a cute little story. And some churches even have uh, Christmas cantatas and they get their choirs and their singers and they, they dedicate a whole service to singing and and doing uh, Christmas songs and Christmas hymns and all that. And that's that's okay. That's fine if that's your thing. Some churches even go as far as putting on what they call Christmas productions where they have plays and they put it on. And then they have the ones even for the children, you know, where they've got the the little kids made up like shepherds and and so on and so forth. And and they've got Mary there with a little manger there. And they got the wise men, three, the three wise men. That's not biblical. The Bible said there were wise men, didn't say three. But they brought Jesus gifts, gold, frankincense. So we could tell that whole story, but you already know it, or you've already heard it. And you've probably heard it as many times as I have. But in First Peter, or excuse me, Second Peter chapter 1, Peter makes a statement that I want to dissect and I want to take apart and I want us to look at at this time of the year. In verse 4, Peter says, Whereby or by which are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these great and exceeding precious promises by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Now I want you to do something real quick in your Bible. Where it says the divine nature, just take, just take and just write in your Bible, write in there, God's divine nature. Because that's whose nature he's talking about. God's divine nature. That you might be made or you might be partakers of God's 
divine nature. Tell your neighbor, God has a nature. Say, God has a divine nature. But you know, isn't it sad that a lot of Christians today don't understand that God, what his nature really is? And God gets blamed for all the heinous crimes that take place in the world. And, and when people get sick or people get killed or people die or, or bad things, tragedy or calamity happens. Isn't it amazing how God gets blamed for everything? But you will never find that in his nature. Not in God's nature. No. Not in God's nature. But God gets blamed for it. So what's happened here? The enemy... Paul says in 2 Corinthians that the enemy, the devil, has, the God of this world, he calls him, mm-hmm. he has blinded the minds of them who are lost. Yeah. And it's sad to say, and I'm going to add a little bit to it, he's even blinded the minds of them that supposedly believe. Because right. he gets blamed for it. But Peter says here, that you might be a partaker or partakers of God's divine nature, Mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the Bible says that you and I are partakers of the divine nature, or we should be, we might be. But what it's important for us to figure out now, and especially at this time of the year, what is God's divine nature? Because God does have a divine nature. God's nature is to be holy, loving, caring, forgiving, compassionate, and giving. You got to stop right there. Because I don't think the church, they like all the other parts. And they want God to give to them. Oh, and yes, I've got the nature of God. I'm compassionate. I'm loving. I'm forgiving on this. But you ain't giving. Let's stop right there. This is God's divine nature. God's a gift. Well, how do we know that? Because Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world, he, 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 he what? He gave what? His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the nature of God, along with the others that we just talked about, is giving. That's the nature of God. And and Peter said here that we might be partakers of that divine nature. You still with me or did you go home? So, Now watch this. God didn't just decide one day, well, I think I'm going to take Jesus and throw him at the people. That's not what he did. See, God had a plan. In other words, what did he do here? God gave thought and preparation before he ever gave us the greatest gift to all of mankind in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. And in doing so, now watch this very carefully, and in doing so, God had something on his mind. Are you ready? For, can you handle this? He had some, when, see, when, when God didn't just say one day, well, I'm going to give Jesus to die for the sins of the world. He didn't do that. He had a plan. He had something on his mind. And the fact is that you were on his mind. Centuries and millennia in the future, God had you on his mind. Before you were ever conceived, before you were ever thought of by anyone, any human being, God had you on his mind. And he wanted you. He wanted you to be a part of his family. But he knew in order to get you to be a part of his family, he had to sow a seed. He had to be willing to give of himself through his son to die for the sin of mankind. You still with me? But the awesome thing about it was 
he had something on his mind, which was you, but not only you, he had something else on his mind. Why? Because the next thing we're going to look at is part of his nature. Go to Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Glory to God. What we're going to look at is leading us up. And God is preparing for us just like he did for us 2,000 years ago in giving his son. God is preparing us for the future. Amen. Say the future. the future. See, you have a future whether you realize it or not. See, you're only focused in on today where you are right now. And you've got to get your eyes off of right now and what is. Why? Because your future tells something different. Did you find Psalm 115? All right, we're going to start in verse 12. You ready? This is God's word. I didn't make this up. David says here, The Lord has been mindful of who? Tell your neighbor, say, the Lord's got me on his mind. He's got you on his mind. You know, when, when, I, when I looked at that yesterday, I mean, I've read this verse a thousand times since I've been a believer. But when I looked at it yesterday, it dawned on me. Do you know God thinks about you all the time? You're on God's mind all the time. Now, I know, well, he couldn't be thinking about me because look what I'm going through and look at all the little problems I got. And blah, blah, blah. He's got you on his mind. You're on, say, I'm on God's mind. I'm on God's mind. I don't know about you, but that's awesome to know that you're on God's mind. Amen. David said he's been mindful of us. But he didn't stop there. He said he will bless us. The word bless means empower us to prosper. God will empower you to prosper. He will bless the house of Israel. First he said he'll bless us, he'll bless the house of Israel, and he'll bless the house of Aaron. Watch verse 13. He will bless them who fear, reverence, and respect the Lord. Both small and great. God's got me on his mind, Chris. He's got you on his mind this morning. Do you know God's in heaven right now thinking about you? Isn't that awesome? Do you know, Mike, do you know that God's got you on his mind? Right now, he's sitting in the throne of heaven, and he's got you on his mind. He, he, he's got all of your thoughts, all of your cares, and all of, all of your concerns, everything that you think about, God knows about it. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares about us. Even Terry. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> uh, God's got you on his mind. Amen. He's mindful of us. Mindful of us. He, he, he blesses us. Huh? He blesses. He's got blessing on his mind. Oh, my goodness. He will bless them who fear the Lord, respect and reverence him, both small and great. Now watch verse 14. The Lord shall increase you. Okay. Now I see two things right here in this in this just just right there in those opening in that opening statement of verse 14. The Lord shall increase you. He's got two things, two more things of his nature. Besides the fact that he bless you, that's his nature. Giving is his nature. He's mindful of you, that's his nature. Now watch this. The next part is he shall increase you. He's got increase on his mind. Increase is part of the divine nature of God. Oh, make me want to run. God's got increase on his mind for you. See, I'm looking to 2024. Me, me personally, this has been a, probably one of the greatest years of my life. In every area. Physically, financially, materially, socially. In every area, this has probably been the greatest, am I telling the truth? The greatest year of my life. But he's got more in store for next year. Why? Because he's got increase on his mind. Notice the increase is part of his nature. 
So if increase is part of his nature and we've taken on that divine nature, then increase ought to be on your mind. Increase ought to be our nature. How many of you want more next year? How many of you got increase on your mind? So I'm gearing up right now, the week before the new year, I'm gearing up for next year. Increase is going to be on my mind all year. Amen. For this church, yes. numerically, Amen. spiritually, Amen. and financially. Amen. You better get ready. How many of you are living, you're tired of living from paycheck to paycheck? How many of you are tired of it? You're not tired of it? Huh? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Tired of living from paycheck to paycheck. See, God wants us to get out of that paycheck to paycheck mentality. God wants to get you and I into a place where you don't even have to be concerned about a paycheck. You got so much. We've, we've, we've been in this house now 10 years. And uh, so my wife, I've been on her since the first day we moved in. We had furniture when we moved into the house. But I've been on her. When are you going to buy new furniture? Well, I haven't found anything I want yet. So now we've been in this house almost 10 years. She still hasn't found the furniture she wanted. But I want new furniture. Don't worry, I'm not going to sit on it. <laughs> she got the money. No, she can go. She can go and pick up whatever she wants to pay cash for. She has the money. She, it, she has it. And I said, babe, when are you going to get new furniture? She says, when I find what I want. Yes. So now I, bet I just back off. Why? Because I know she's not going to get anything until she get what she wants. Well, finally, the other day, she came home and said, guess what? She got increase on her mind. And she went and bought what she wanted. They're getting ready to deliver it any day now. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. What am I talking about this morning? If we've got the divine nature of God like Peter told us, and we do, then increase should be in our mind each and every day. Tell your neighbor, I've got increase on my mind. You got increase on your mind? No, you got increase on your mind? I'm talking about increase on your job, increase in your marriage, increase in your home, increase in your relationship with the Lord. Increase. Now, I don't have to tell you my business. And, I don't, and, I, and you got to understand, I'm not telling you this to make you think that I'm somebody special, because I'm not, okay? Paul and I had a long talk this morning about it. I love this guy, man, I'm telling you. This, you don't know how, uh, how much I love this guy. And I appreciate him. But anyway, not that I'm special or anything, but this year, I make it a point to read through the Bible every year. And I have, I've been doing this for years. And I've lost count. So to tell you how many times I've read the Bible, I'd be lying because I don't know. But this year I made it a point to go through the Bible twice. And I've read through from Genesis to Revelation twice this year. And so at the, part, at the, at the beginning of December this year, I went back to the book of Genesis again. Well, I always re read the book of Revelation first. And then I go back to Genesis. So now, since December 1st, I've read Revelation, Genesis, Genesis, and Exodus. And then by the end of the week, I will have read Leviticus again. So that's four, four chapters, you know, of, of the Bible and already. So two, two full times and four, four, four books this year. Next year, I want to increase that. I want to pray more next year. And I've already got some things in line for increase next year that I want to, I'm, I want to do next year spiritually in my own personal life. I've, I'm already making plans now to increase that. 
I've already got some things planned out financially for increase, things I want to do financially that are, that's not going to give anything to me but to give it away. My goal this year, my goal with, see, and I'm a firm believer, and I know this isn't New Year's yet, this is still Christmas, but we're talking about the divine nature of the Lord. My goal this year was to give $100,000 to this church. 100000 I didn't make it. I came up a little bit short. Matter of fact, a lot short, but anyway. But it's still going to be the best year that I've ever given to the church. But next year, I'm going to do it. See, I set myself goals like that. Because if I don't have any goals, I have nothing to shoot at. I have nothing to, to go after. Do you understand? I'm a firm believer that it's better to have. Now, some people call them New Year's resolutions, but they turn into revolutions. But I'm a firm believer that you need to have goals. Because if you don't have any goals and set any goals, you don't have anything to shoot for. But I'd rather have a goal and not achieve it than to have no goal at all. You've heard me say that for years. But next year, starting right now, I got increase on my mind. Why do I have increase on my mind? Because the Lord's been mindful of me. He's got increase on his mind. So if that's part of his nature, his divine nature is for increase, why can't it be a part of our nature for increase? Because we've got his divine nature. Are, are you still with me? Or did you go home? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm totally going to keep it short, and I am. So David informs us that God is mindful of us. Oh, my goodness. He said he will increase you more and more, you and your children. Catch that. He says, you're blessed of the Lord. You're empowered to prosper of the Lord who made the heaven and earth. The, now watch what he says here in verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens are whose? The Lord's. But the earth, say the earth, the earth. has he given. David said the earth has he given. God's a giver. That's his nature. The earth has he given to who? Who are the children of men? Say, the earth is mine, because the Lord gave it to me. Now, we know the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But if it's the Lord's, does he have a right to give it to whoever he wants to give it to? If it's his? He said, the earth is he given to the children of men. That's you and I. Why did he do this? David said, because the dead praise not the Lord. Neither any that go down into silence. But we, say we. Let's make it personal. Say I. But I, but I will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. That's what David said. See, so next year, because we, because we have the nature of God, next year, because we have increase on our mind like the Lord does, we have his nature. Next year when we come to church, we're not going to come in looking like we've been sucking on a lemon. Well, how are we going to come to church? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm here. I'm excited. I'm excited right now. Can you tell? I've made plans already for next year. Because I am believing 2024. If Jesus doesn't rapture us out between now and New Year's Day, 2024 is going to be the greatest year of my life. Even greater than this year? Yes. Oh, yes. It's going to be even greater. Why? Because I'm going to continually keep the nature of God within me, and I'm going to keep increase on my mind, and I'm going to be mindful of him like he's mindful of me. See, the problem with a lot of Christians is they're not mindful of the Lord. They only think about the Lord on Sunday. And a lot of Christians don't even think about him on Sunday. A lot of Christians only think about the Lord when they get in trouble. I'm just telling you about me now because I, I can talk about me and not get my feelings hurt. But when I wake up in the morning, the first thing on my mind is Jesus. 
He's the first thing on my mind. I don't say, good Lord, it's morning. I say, good morning, Lord. Thank you for giving me another day. Thank you for giving me breath in my lungs. Thank you for giving me a spring in my step. Lord, thank you that I don't have to use a cane. Thank you that I'm not in a wheelchair. Thank you, Lord, I don't get around like an old man. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Why? Well, I'm getting older, but I refuse. I'm getting older, but I refuse to get old. I'm not going to get old. I refuse it. I refuse getting old. So David informs us that God is mindful of us. But only, not only mindful of us, but he has increase on his mind for us. Amen. He has increase on his mind for us. He said he would increase you more and more, you and your children. So this is another attribute of God's nature, his divine nature. So now if we, you and I, are partakers, if we are partakers of God's divine nature, then shouldn't we have increase on our mind? Yeah. Yeah. Say, I have increase on my mind. Say, I have increase on my mind for 2024. So, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you to the test this year. You ready? When I see you and I say, how are you doing? What are you going to tell me? That's all I want to hear. And that's all you need to be telling anybody else. Amen. You don't need to be telling them about your problems. You don't need to be telling them your sins. You don't need to be telling them what you're going through because they really don't care. But if you tell them you've got increase on your mind, it's going to spark something in them. That's the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. You're iron. I'm iron. We're iron. We all sharpen each other. We keep everybody. Come on. This, we keep everybody in check. Amen. We keep each other in check. Do we not? Yeah. My wife and I made a covenant a long time ago. We made an agreement. We said, if we ever catch each other saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing, we gave each other the right to call, us, call each other on the carpet. And in all those years, I can honestly tell you, probably count them on about five, on one hand. How many times we've caught each other? Her and I together. Why? Because we've made a decision to stick with the word. That's right. To let the word be final authority in our life. That's right. You with me? Yeah. But see, too many Christians are concerned about just getting by. And they're not thinking about or being mindful of the fact that God wants them to prosper and increase. They're not thinking about that. Real quick, and I'll close. You ready? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, because I'm going to show you something here. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Now remember the things we talked about. God's divine nature is holy, loving, caring, forgiving, compassionate, giving. God's divine nature is increase. God's divine nature is to have you and I on his mind. Therefore, all these things we just talked about, just flip it over now, and that should be our nature as well. Because we have his nature. Say, I have the nature of God. Now, what I'm going to share with you right now, you all know this verse. And I know you know it. But sometimes it's good to look at it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Are you there? Look at verse 6. Now, why am I looking at this verse? Because this is the Christmas time of the year and people get into the, to the spirit of giving and some get into the spirit of receiving. And, you know, and so... I'm, I've, I've always been this way. This is just the way I am. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. I don't place a lot of emphasis on receiving. That's just me now, okay? And the reason why is because of what Jesus said when he told the Apostle Paul that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because I know if I obey God's voice, he'll take care of me. You with me? And he has. He's taken good care of me. But Paul talks about giving here and sowing here in these verses here. In chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And Paul says this. He says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also what? Or he who sows little will reap what? Little. 
He who sows bountifully or much shall reap what? Bountifully or much. Now watch this verse 7 very closely. Every man. That means every woman too. It's, it's talking about every believer. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. See, that's where it takes place. Giving is a condition of the heart. You with me? It's a condition of the heart. Every man, according as he purposes in, in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Why, Paul? For or because God loves what? Now, we know in this church the word cheerful means what? Say it again. A cheerful giver is one who is happy, uh -huh. hilarious, and prompt to do it. That's what God likes. In other words, God treasures that type of a giver. Why? Because that's how God is. That's his nature. So now, I want to close. I told you I was going to. Already, can you believe that? No, no, you, I know you didn't tell me to do it. This is what the Lord laid on my heart for the people. The Lord said, give him Give them a little bit of extra time to enjoy today. There's five things, and I want you to write these down. There are five things a believer must do when they give. You ready? And all of these are attributes of God's divine nature. You ready? Number one, he must be or he must give willingly from his heart. That's the first act. Do you know that God was willing when he gave Jesus? He was willing to give Jesus from his heart because the Bible says he so loved the world. The world represented there was talking about the sinners. You and I were sinners. You and I had a first class ticket to hell. But he loved us anyway. And because his heart was right and he loved us, he was willing to give his very best for us. He gave his very best. Number two, he must not give grudgingly or feeling forced into it. Never give if a preacher is forcing you or telling you you have to give. Don't, don't, don't do that. Because first off, it won't work because your heart's not right. This is, a, this is something between you and God that you have to get right in your own heart. So if somebody is trying to force you into giving, it'll backfire. It won't work. you got to give because your heart's right. That's why the Lord gave Jesus. Number three, he must not give out of compulsion. You know what compulsion is? Everybody know what compulsion is? You know, when you go in the grocery store and you're at the checkout stand, and then they have those little those they have those little trays or little stands next to the checkout stand and they've got bubble gum and sunflower seeds and candy and all yeah. okay that's for compulsive buyers yeah. last minute you know they they don't really want it they really don't need it but yeah. you've done, I've done it yeah. I bought bubble gum when or chewing gum when I didn't even want chewing gum yeah. you have too and I put it in my truck, and every once in a while I'll take a piece out. I had a thing of those, those ice chewing gum. You know what I'm talking about? And I had it in my, in my glove box in my truck, my armrest. I had it. It was there for almost a year. <laughs> and one day I reached in there and grabbed a hold of one, and I went, it was so hard. I said, man, so I threw the whole thing out. But I was a compulsive buyer. I bought that compulsively. Didn't need it. Didn't really want it, but I bought it. And the fifth, no, watch, now that's the third thing. The fourth thing, he says, we must give cheerfully, happily, and hilariously. See, this is what, now, I, like I said, I don't have to share my personal business, but this is one of the reasons why I love to give. I love increasing my giving. Why? Because I, I like to, I like to challenge myself. I'm a challenger. So I challenge myself to do certain things. How about you? 
See, at Christmas time, for, for a lot of people, a lot of people hate Christmas. Christians. Because you know why? All they see is dollar signs. What's it going to cost me? It's not about dollar signs. It's about the fact that I get to bless. I get to do. I want. I don't do things I don't have to do. I only do things what, what I want to do. I better not share that. No, I'll just leave it alone. No, because people get bent out of shape when you tell them certain things. Well, I don't think you ought to do that. Well, ain't none of your business. It's my money. I can do what I want with my money. If I want to flush my money down the toilet, I can flush it down the toilet. It ain't none of your business. But you could have gave it to me. Yeah, and then you wouldn't appreciate it. Moving right along. You must give cheerfully, happily, and hilariously. And the fifth thing. You ready? The fifth thing when you give Always give with expectation that God, now listen to what I'm about to say, that God will give you the increase on it. Some people say, well, I, I've given and I never get anything. Well, what'd you expect? Nothing. Well, that's why you didn't get anything. Now watch this. But pastor, you said, you, you, I've, I've told you this over the years. When I sow, when I give a seed, I always expect a harvest on the seed that I plant. Now, here's where people get in trouble. You might bless someone. Now, listen to me. You might bless someone, but never expect to get it back from the person you blessed. Do you know who I expect it from? That's where people get in trouble. Well, I ain't giving them nothing. They never give me nothing. Well, your, your attitude is not right. I don't give to get from the person I give to. I never do that. I give, when I give to, to someone, I give expecting God to give it back. He's the one that said he would take care of me. He's the one who has increase on his mind. He's the one who said he would bless me. He's the one who said that he would give me more and more, increase me more and more, me and my children. He's the one that said it. No, no, no man has ever promised me that. So if I'm looking to man to give it back to me, I've missed it. I've missed it. Always expect God. Why? Quit looking to people as your source. God, now watch this. Quit looking to people, but remember that God uses people, people you never expect. I went to the mailbox yesterday. I go to the mailbox every day. And I've told you this. Now, don't get mad at me, please. Because you don't know what I just gave out. I just gave out the last week, I gave out $8,000. I didn't tell you that to say, wow. But I went to the mailbox yesterday. And there was $2,000 in my mailbox. But more is coming. More is coming. You gave away that much money? Yeah, and I'm not done. Because tomorrow's Christmas. Now I've got to take care of my family tomorrow. Kids, grandkids. And they, they love dad and grandpa. They love him. But here's the thing. When I go tomorrow, when I go to meet them all, I never expect anything from them. I don't expect anything from my kids and grandkids. I never expect anything from them. Do I? But when grandpa shows up, when dad shows up, hey, because I ask them, well, I, I, I quit asking them now because they know they ain't getting nothing but money. <laughs> they never have to take anything I give them back. Huh? I, don't, I don't go buy gift cards. I hate gift cards. That's just me. Okay? Because I don't like gift cards. I don't like I don't like to try to figure out how to work them out and go online and do it. No, just give me the cat. Give me the green stuff, baby. I'm easy. It spins easier. Am I telling the truth? Well, I want to get you an Amazon gift card. I don't like Amazon gift cards. 
Nothing against Amazon. I have an Amazon account, but I don't like gift cards. Give me the cash, I'll put it in the bank, and then I'll go. That's how I am. But God uses people. Say, God uses people. people. I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. God uses people to increase you and to bless you. But he is your Jehovah Jireh. He is your provider, not people. He is. Amen? So the Christmas time of the year, the Christmas season, should be a time to be happy and thankful and not a time to grudge. Well, I don't give anything at Christmas. I I just don't believe it. No, you're just Ebenezer Scrooge, that's all. Have you ever noticed something about Christmas? Even the teenagers now, they don't know why, but they work at the fast food joints. Even there at Christmas time, they're a little more happier and nicer. Have you ever noticed that? I've been there twice this past week, drove through, and they got my order right both times. (laughs) First time in history. They never get... And I went, I went through one, and the little girl at the window, she says, uh, sir, everything's in the bag. I said, is it okay if I check? Well, yeah, but it's all in there. I said, they tell me that every time I come, but I want to make sure, because I'm not driving off and then having to come back. Right. I've learned that the hard way. Right. But it's also a time to prepare yourself. Now, listen to what I'm going to say, and I'm going to close. It's also a time, Christmas is a time to prepare yourself For the new year. With expectation. Of increase. What did I tell you you're going to say next year when when I see you? What are you going to tell me? No, no. What are you going to tell me? Come on. What do you have on your mind? Increase. Increase. See, now this is the time of year to begin expecting for next year. This year's over. You only got a week left in this year. Forget it. Forget it. It's gone. This is gone. You can't get it back. But next year, I got increase on my mind. Huh? Just like God our Father had increase on his mind when he gave us Jesus Christ. Amen? What do you got on your mind? Increase. What do you got on your mind? Increase. What do you have on your mind? Increase. Now see... Now, you're going to be one up on everybody who wasn't here today. You're going to be up on them because next year you're already. Okay, I'm going to mess with you. I'm going to mess with you. What do you got on your mind? So that means increase where? Everywhere. On the job? Paycheck? Better hours? Get the Paychecks going up? Hours going up? Wages going up? Hours going up? Huh? You expecting it? Schedule you want? Yes, sir. What do you got on your mind, Al? <laughs> Increase for 2024? Yes. Where? Everywhere. Work, She's declared she's going to be our keyboardist. Amen. Amen. Where else? <laughs> Financially! <laughs> <laughs> Number one, hey. <laughs> you see these things? Got to keep this on our mind. Yeah. Why? God's mi- mindful of, of increasing us more and more. Then we ought to be mindful of the fact that he wants to increase us more and more. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm done. Did you get anything out of that? Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Carla and I love you. We appreciate you. And we're expecting 2024 to be the greatest year of our lives. Amen. So we trust this message has been a blessing to you. The announcer will give you more information how you can obtain an audio or video of the message you've just heard. Remember also that these broadcasts are made possible by the continued free will offerings of you, the viewers and listeners. Remember also that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is